Hello, my name is Susan Lauer. I am the administrator for Marshi Vastu in the United States. And we are very pleased to have everyone with us this afternoon. We welcome you to this first in a series of webinars, the title of which today will be Five Ways that Maharshi Vastu creates a harmonious home. John Lippman, who is our national director for Maharshi Vastu for North America, will be giving the principal presentation and also answering the questions that come in. Okay, John, would you like to begin? Hi, I'm John Lippman. I'm the director for Maharshi Vastu in North America and the Caribbean. And we're delighted that all of you can join us. And we're going to start right in by asking the question, what is Vastu? Well, a short definition is that Vastu is the design and construction of a house in harmony with natural law. And it comes from a limb of the ancient Vedic tradition, which is the world's most comprehensive and intact and ancient system for the development of our human potential. And the word Veda itself, Veda as it's spelt and Ved as it is commonly pronounced, means knowledge. But what we understand is that what it refers to is the intelligence, the organizing intelligence at the basis of all of nature. And so simply to call that, that intelligence knowledge is inadequate. And so a better definition is total or complete knowledge. And it contains different qualities, different um, limbs, and one of them is the total knowledge that organizes the structures of the universe. Well, what are the structures of the universe? The universe is composed of galaxies, solar systems, stars, planets, human physiology, the cells in our body, the molecules, including DNA and the cells and the atoms inside of the molecules. And each of these structures have an architecture. And they exist in perfect balance and harmony internally and within the entire universe. And the word stapatya, the first word of stapatya ved, has as its root the Sanskrit word stapan which is related to the English word establish. And so we can literally translate stapajaved as the knowledge of establishing. But what it really is, is the foundation of the architecture principles of the structures of nature. And when we apply appropriate principles of this to the structures that we create, our buildings and our cities, then we say that this quality of balance and harmony within the structure and within the whole universe is being established. And that term in Sanskrit is vastu. And so as a convention in India, the land of the Ved, homes that are built using this ancient system of eternal knowledge of nature's architecture are called vastu homes and cities. And the famous Vedic sage Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, so well known for introducing transcendental meditation or TM to the world and bringing out Ayurveda and bringing out Hatha Yoga to millions of people around the world, focused a great deal of his career, about 15 years, on this body of knowledge, the architecture of nature and how to apply it how to apply Vastu to the design of buildings and cities. And in so doing, it, he gave us a practice which is very, very authentic and therefore very, very effective because the ancient texts tell us that when you design a building according to natural law using Vastu, that you can create influences promoting good health, happiness, family harmony, success, and growth to enlightenment. And this is very important, very valuable. And so he focused for a long time to ensure that the practice that he would bring out 
would really be fully Vedic and really bring these qualities into people's lives. And so we signify this practice of Vastu that we're talking about by putting Maharishi's name in front of it. And so the full name is Maharishi or Maharshi Vastu Architecture and Planning. So getting to our lecture topic, what is a harmonious house? Well, what would be a harmonious thing? Well, the dictionary tells us that for something to be harmonious, it should be balanced, it should be friendly, it should be peaceful, it should be pleasant, it should have a warm feeling. And now what might be the reality when it comes to a home? Well, one reason that we selected this title, Harmony, for this home, is because both Susan and I, who of course live in Maharshi Vastu homes, love being in our homes so much, and we're typical, we're not unusual. We love being in our Vastu homes so much that we don't like to even leave them. And both of us now have made arrangements so that we can work a large part of the week from our own homes. And so this idea of a harmonious house is very real to Susan and me. And so it's a topic that we wanted to share with you. But let's see now how other people who live in Maharshi Vastu homes describe its quality of harmony as it affects their lives. You feel this very, very profound stillness that doesn't shift or change. And the nice part of that for my life is the peacefulness that it brings to me and how I feel. And now we'll hear another. Anything you do within a Marshi Stepachevic house has this incredible feeling of silence and um, sort of this just whole, um, this sweet quality that underlies everything you do within the structure, whether you're mm -hmm. eating, you're playing, you're sleeping, um, whatever it is you're doing. And, and so I think that it's that quality that allows for you know, my whole family to just you know, enjoy being here and have more happiness, more health. This harmony that these two speakers and Susan and I experience living in Maharshi Vastu homes, peace at its deepest level, it's a very real thing. And we're today gonna to talk about the elements that create this profound quality of harmony in a Maharshi Vastu home. The first we call right orientation. That is the direction that our homes face and the direction that we face for primary activities. So how does right orientation produce harmony? Because it's certainly not obvious and it doesn't seem even likely to us. So let me introduce the subject by asking you a question. <clears throat> and unfortunately, of course, I won't hear your answers, but the question is, why does the sun rise in the east? And the answer is very simple. The earth is a sphere. It rotates on its axis that runs through the north and south pole, and it rotates from west to east. And this means that the surface of the earth rotates constantly from west to east. And actually, at this latitude, we are moving, therefore, our entire lives at about 1,000 miles an hour, about 1,600 kilometers per hour to the east. So that means that east is our direction of travel for our entire life. And because the surface of the earth is rotating to the east, all of the celestial bodies, everything outside of planet earth, appears to pass overhead from east to west. And the sun is the most obvious example and the most important one. And really, everything on the surface of the Earth, directly or indirectly, is as it is because of the life-bestowing qualities of the sun. The sun is the prime natural law that affects our life on planet Earth. And when we face east, because the sun and all the other celestial bodies come at us from the east, when we face east, we are facing the, dir the direction of the life-giving force, energy of the sun, etc. And so, in other words, when we face east, 
we are facing natural law. And in the Vedic literature, it is stated that when you face natural law, the natural law supports you. You are aligning yourself with nature. And this is why the very best direction of sleep, which comprises a third of our day in which we're oriented in a single direction, the very best direction to sleep is head to the east. Now, what I mean by that is the headboard or the pillow should be at the east end of the bed. And when we work or study, the best direction to face, to look, is to the east and secondarily to the north. And so the ancient texture, texts tell us that um, the direction that we face has an effect upon our life and medical research is actually bearing this out now, but we'll come to that later. In the meantime, I want to point out that <clears throat> the buildings that we occupy are really in a way intermediaries between us and the natural environment, between us and the sun. And so one could speculate in this context that gee, maybe even the direction which the building I occupy faces might have some impact upon my relationship with nature? And the answer is yes. In fact, the Vedic literature says that the most important influence on our lives from our buildings is the direction that buildings face. And east is wholly nourishing and north is also. And south facing buildings are the most negative. They're associated with all problems and suffering. Now this sounds to some extremely unlikely. It probably sounds like superstition because it is ancient information and could be regarded as superstition, except for the fact that recent published peer-reviewed medical studies have confirmed this ancient guideline. Now, therefore, surprising as it may sound, perhaps the single biggest contributor to making life in a home harmonious is the direction which a building faces and secondarily the directions that we face for primary activities such as sleep and work and study. Do the rules of orientation and also placement change depending mm -hmm. on which side of the equator I'm building on? Mm -hmm. It's a great, it's a very astute question. And the answer is no, that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west throughout the world, whether we're north of the equator or south of the equator. And the intelligence of the sun, the organizing intelligence of the sun, the differing qualities of the sun's energy over the course of the day are the same everywhere on the earth. And that is the answer. So the same rules are applicable for room placement in the north and the south hemispheres, yes? Correct. Now, in the next webinar, I will focus deeply on why the direction of East is so significant in our lives. But for more information in the meantime, bear with me while I bring up some visual information, feel free to go to our website, which is maharishivastu.org. And there, click where the red arrow is in the upper left on the button that says, now I have to get my glasses on, what is Vastu? And when you click on that, you get a pull down menu and one of the items on it is research. Click on that. And that brings you to a page that gives a very short summary of the notion of research into Vastu. And then click near the bottom on the line that says, summary of research. And it will then download onto your machine a, a PDF of about 10 pages, which will take you through the medical research and site where the research has been published. Now at this point, I'd like to break and ask whether you have any questions on the subject of right orientation. Yes, John, I do have a couple questions on orientation. If your house faces east, but there is a hill preventing the morning sun from hitting your house, is that bad? 
and why? One of the qualities uh, of the sun, one of the qualities deriving from the rotation of the earth from east to west is that there is, the Vedic literature tells us, and many other ancient traditions also, that there is a life bestowing, a nourishing, a health giving energy that comes from the east at the time of sunrise around that time to us. And medical research seems to initially bear this out, which I'll go into on another webinar. And if there's a hill to the east of our home, then we are deprived of that health bestowing quality of energy because it won't pass through a hill. And also it will delay, it will retard sunrise, it will reduce the amount of influence that we get from the sun from the east. And so the premise of that question is correct. We do not encourage anyone to live in a house when there is a hill to the east. And this is the reason why the Maharshi Vastu Consultation Service, which I direct for North America, always encourages our clients to get in touch with us before they buy a lot that they're going to build on because then we will work with them remotely, we don't have to travel to it, to assess precisely what the effect of the topography to the east of the site will be so that we can definitively tell them whether it will be a nourishing site to build on. Okay, here's a question that just came in and she says, can you do anything if you live in a house facing south to improve the impact it has on your health and life? Well, that's, that's a very good question. Um, and the answer is very simple. Most houses have a back door or a side door. And so it may be that the house that you live in has an east door or a north door, which certainly may be less convenient to use. My recommendation to you is to simply stop using the south door and use an east or a north door. In some cases, people who have not had east or north doors have had them built onto their house. And anecdotally, the results that this has made on people's lives is shockingly great. In my own home, when I first got this information, in fact, I lived in a house that faced south, but the back door, the kitchen door, which opened conveniently right onto an alley, faced north and the front door faced south. I hope that's what I said a minute ago. And so we closed up the front door and put a little sign next to the door telling the postal people to come around to the back. And there was somebody who was living in that house at that time who had a chronic condition and almost immediately it abated and did not return. And I can tell you other similar stories. Now, such stories are not by any means proof, but they, I hope, are reason enough to encourage you to try these things for yourself. Okay, here's another one, John. Mm -hmm. Why is it necessary to be a degree off from East? We do not recommend being a degree off from East. Um, when we build Maharshi Vastu, we, do, we use a surveyor and we do our very best to align new construction precisely to the east. That is where the sun rises on the uh, September and March equinoxes. Yes, I think maybe this would be a good time, John, to just make the distinction between um, true cardinal directions and uh, magnetic compass directions, too, because uh, many people don't think of that as being anything different. That's very wise, Susan. In some parts of the world, magnetic north, as shown on a compass, and true north are the same, but in some parts of the world, they deviate in in, for instance, the Pacific Northwest of the United States, they, de they differ from each other by over 20 degrees, which is an enormous amount. If you live in Chicago, they're identical. And the drift is corresponding according to the distance you get from certain meridians on the earth. So using a compass 
is potentially misleading. And what we're referring to, as Susan intimates, is true solar east. That is, the direction where, where the sun rises exactly on the equinoxes, March 21st, September 21st. And there are a couple of easy ways to check the orientation of any given house. And that is uh, by looking, going on to any one of the following programs on a computer or a smartphone, and those are Google Maps, Google Earth, or Yahoo Maps because any of these programs and probably other similar ones, when you type in your address and a photograph or a map comes up showing your address, it will have due north directly on the top of the screen and therefore due east is directly on the right-hand side of the screen. So you can easily, by comparing, when you zoom into your house as far as it'll go, by comparing the orientation of the sides of your house to the orientation of the sides of the screen, you can see how close it is to aligning with the true cardinal directions. Okay, here's one more um, on orientation. There's actually two more. Most modern homes have more glazed or glass windows and doors at the back of the house. This allows more light to enter the home from the back of the house than from the front of the house. Mm -hmm. Hence, shouldn't homes be facing west so the back of the house, which allows the most light in, allows most light in from the east? Light from all four directions is good, is healthful, is normal. And when we build Vastu houses, like all houses, we put windows on all four sides. <clears throat> we do understand that having lots of light coming in from the east is especially nourishing to us. And, and as a kind of experiment in the house that I live in right now, every room has an east window and I love it. Um, but once you bring some east light into the house, plenty of it, that's enough. You don't have to worry about more. And so if you have an east facing house, you have the front door, the door you use to enter it on the east side, and you wish to have lots of windows on the west side because you want to have a view of the backyard, there's absolutely no harm in that. Okay, and the last question, there's actually two questions that are very similar about orientation. Um, this one, the easiest one is what about multi family apartment condo type houses. Do we consider the house entrance or the apartment entrance? And the other question that had come in earlier said it, very similarly, if the main entrance is facing south, but the residence entrance from the parking is east, does that minimize the negative effects of the main entrance? And the answer is that what counts as the biggest influence and I should back up and say that when we actually design a Maharshi Vastu building, apartment building or house or office building, we design several things about the building so that they all agree on the ideal orientation of the house. And it is overwhelmingly east or north oriented. But in an existing building, the only thing that we have any control over is where we come and go. And so we go with that. Be sure to, we recommend that you come and go from a building from the east or from the north. And certainly it's great to encourage other people to as well. And what we understand is that that alone is a good thing. And so it's, it's certainly something worth doing. The direction into which we enter a unit once we're inside of the building is not something of any particular significance. These are the five ways that Maharshi Vastu can bring harmony to our homes. The first is right orientation of the home and secondarily of our own actions in the home, major activities. Um, second is right placement, that is what we put where in the home. The third is right proportions or measurements or dimensions of the home in harmony with natural law. The fourth is using natural and non-toxic materials. 
and the fifth is the surroundings. And there's a whole hour that we could spend talking about ways in which the surroundings have an effect upon us, but it's common sense, and I don't think it needs any amplification. So when we incorporate these five elements to produce harmony, yes, they do, uh, anecdotally and statistically, we can say with confidence, enliven in occupants' lives the qualities of good health, of happiness, of family harmony, of success, of growth to enlightenment. But those are just symptoms of something deeper that Vastu does. What it does is it aligns our individual intelligence with what we could call cosmic intelligence, with that field of intelligence that orders all of the cosmos. And when that is done, there is less suffering, we make wiser choices, and in many measurements, life becomes more successful and more harmonious.